Hi, this is Lisa Williams from Place Blogger. I'm not a journalist, but one of the things I've noticed over the past few years is the steady and increasingly rapid drift of the news industry towards my industry, the high-tech industry. In the News is Code, Code is News series, you'll hear commentary and ideas on this merger. By the way, to see the whole series, check out the Idea Lab blog at pbs.org slash idealab. This week, the Washington Post won a Pulitzer for its in-depth reporting on conditions at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Michael DeSeal, who took this photo, and Washington Post reporters Dana Priest and Ann Hull won the prize, along with five others awarded to the Washington Post. Now, how could technology improve on the work of Priest, Hull, and DeSeal? Well, even in a newsroom like the Washington Post, that is, one that has the resources to let a team spend weeks or months on a story like this one, the fact is, is that teams often have, end up having to tell stories by anecdote, that is, illustrating a trend through the stories of individual people, in this case, individual soldiers. The problem with that is that it always leaves room for scenes like this one, where some official stands behind a podium and says, these are just isolated incidents. Now, in my industry, when there's a problem, sometimes we call it a, bl a bug or an exploit or an attack. We especially call it an attack if it's something that is coming from outside the system and kind of undermining it. So I guess we could call this particular attack on the credibility of an existing piece of journalism attack of the podium weasels. Now, one way the technology can help uh, defend against this kind of attack and hold officials to account is by helping to answer distributed questions in a distributed way. This is really important because in Increasingly, our most important problems as a nation and even as a people um, are distributed. Home foreclosures, climate change, global health. It's difficult for newsrooms to cover these effectively because of the distributed and even global nature of the problem. Priest, Hull, and DeSeal showed us the lives of some vets at Walter Reed, but who can answer this question? How many of the more than 6,000 vets who lost a limb in Iraq or Afghanistan have been issued a prosthesis and given the physical therapy necessary to use it? This is a knowable number, but perhaps not with conventional news gathering techniques. However, it's easy to see how technology could be used to help harness widely distributed information from many people to form a coherent picture of problems that many seem content to ignore.